Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. A really exciting project here at the moment. And this is gonna be the breeding, or a breeding attempt, of our T. Celadonia, the Brazilian jewels. Now we're doing this slightly different to what I would normally do it. And I'm always telling you guys, whenever you're doing your breeding attempts, always bring your male to the female's enclosure and try and do it that way. Because we want our females to feel happy and secure before we start all this. Now this is gonna be a little bit different because our female, we managed to get our male about a week ago. And our female, the very night that he was here, she came out and has been wandering around ever since. She's been just mooching about. So I thought what we'd do is as she's still out and about, she's not gone back under her trap door. So this says two things. Maybe she's got a little bit too large for it and she's looking for a new home. Or maybe she's heard our male who's recently spun her sperm web and that's encouraged her out. We're not really 100% sure. So I thought what we do, she is gonna be rehoused at the same time. So we're gonna put her on this log and then we're gonna introduce him and see what happens. It might work, it might not, but all we can do is try. We don't learn nothing unless we try. So this is, uh, this is our old home in there. As you can see there, it's a lovely, lovely little setup there. And she's left that for whatever reason. And she has been wandering around all over the place. And here she is. Absolutely gorgeous. And she's quite a big girl as, a, as the Celadonias go. She's not even bothered with her food there. So what we're going to do, we are going to place her on the middle of this log, hopefully. We're just gonna encourage her to go down there. I know, I've just woken you up, and I? What we wanna do is just get her to step off. That's her in situ. And here is our male. Now. What do I do? What do I do now? Let's get him to. All being well, I'll give these guys a second or two just to get their faculties about them. You can see the differences there really clearly. The female, she's a big chunky affair, huge great abdomen on her, and male's tiny. Quite a leggy little soul. We might well have to encourage him to, oh, hang on. No, he's, he's thinking about doing it himself. Let's see what he does. So what we've done now is we've given these guys a few minutes. And as you can appreciate, this is very unusual territory for both of them, which doesn't really matter so much to the male because he's a wanderer, but the female is in completely alien territory. And as you can see there, she's just sitting tight. Now 
Now we wasn't sure if this was really going to work out because in past experiences females moved into alien territory don't always perform too well when it comes down to the breeding. And this is mainly because they are not they're not really happy, they're not comfortable. As you can see, she's an absolutely beautiful spider in great condition, huge great abdomen on her. You can see where they get their name, the Brazilian jewel. Very, very pretty spider. And in contrast, the males are very different. Here he comes. Very leggy little individuals. He's still got that little jewel of a bum. His abdomen. Carapace is different. Very cool spiders. Very interesting to work with. That's an interesting point now that we've seen there. He's literally walked within an inch or so. Oh, she's gone. Very, very quick. And this went on for some time. So what we done then, was it suddenly dawned on me that our male, he's not seeing her by sight. And what we've done now is we've moved her trap door, which is on a piece of bark, onto the big bark and he's found you know he's found that straight away and, and immediately he reacted to the pheromones that would be surrounding that trapdoor and as you can see she's still sat there and she, he's oblivious to her but he can sense the pheromones in the trapdoor and he's gone in there and he's having a look around and he, you can see there he's shaking away he knows there's a receptive female somewhere but why isn't she at home well, I should imagine he's a little confused now he sat like this for some time and it was very strange, it's almost like he's taken up residence and she hasn't moved at all. Now we're going to try and gent gently coax her back towards the trap door because as is often with, with the spiders Sometimes they can be sat almost next to each other, but be oblivious to one another. And it's not until they get that first contact that things start to happen. And as you can see there, we're using the moss to move her. Just very, very gently. We don't want to disturb them too much. Now look at that. She's actually found a hole underneath the piece of bark. And she's gone under there. Not really what we was hoping for. But also, interestingly enough, we've seen that the male hasn't noticed anything. Has he fallen asleep in there? Very frustrating. Yep, she's underneath the bark. He's inside the trapdoor. And they are oblivious to one another. So what we're going to do now, we're moving the whole piece of bark to a position now where hopefully they might just realise they're in the vicinity of one another. Now if our female had been in the trapdoor we wouldn't have had this problem. So this is a really interesting procedure to go through. Now you can see now he's actually he's starting to tap again now and we've still seen no reaction from our female. She is still in shock and uh, in the process of trying to hide. He is now starting to get the gist of uh, what he's there for. We've still not made contact yet. Here he goes. Now at this point I was still very unsure as to how she was going to react. And I was a little nervous that maybe she might just wake up and tear straight inside that 
trapdoor and nail our mail. Try and inch our mail out. We need him to come outside. Here we go. We need first contact to be achieved. He's starting to shake away again there. That's what it's all about. He's stamping his feet on that bark. She should be able to feel these vibrations. Sometimes our spiders need a little encouragement. Here we go. Now we're getting full on now. You notice how he's holding his petty palps up. He's reaching out, he's stamping them front legs. This is something we see in a lot of our spiders. She's still showing no interest at all. Now I'm sure we would have seen much more reaction from her had she been in her natural surroundings. Here we go, we've got contact there. He's touched her a couple of times now. Here we go, she's starting to wake up. You notice how he's arching his front legs now. Pedipalps are held high. Now he's doing what we often see with our tarantulas with the males. They come in, they wave their legs, they stamp their feet, and then they back off. And then they come in and they do it again. And this is like constantly testing the ground. He's going in, coming back out again. Now in amongst all of this, he's only actually touched her a couple of times. Now yeah, again, a little bit more forceful now. This is what we want. We need him to come out of that trapdoor. He's getting quite excited now. She's starting to get a little bit of movement. He's actually working hard now to wake her up. He's quite persistent. You can see now she's lifting her legs. Here she comes. This is what we want. We need her to turn around. Look at that. She's almost offered herself up immediately. Now he's got the grip. That's it. He's got her in position. And it looks like we may well be in the process of insemination now. You notice everything's stopped only his petty palps, you can just see that they're stretched out. I would say he's actually inseminated her now. Looking at her abdomen, you see her abdomen is rocking from side to side. This could well be his movement as he inseminates. That is looking very, very promising. Difficult to see, but now you can see he's reaching underneath her now, but he looks to be too far back. So I, th I would say he was inseminating to begin with, but now he's come back. Now you see this constant vibration. He's still, he's still chatting to her all the time. She's still submissive. Frantic, look at this. They go into this frantic arm waving. He's getting her back into position again. There we go. He's got the grip. He's inseminating now. 
This is looking very, very promising. Perfect. There we go. I'm pretty sure we've got a successful insemination there. And look at the way he's backing off. Did you see the way he used his front legs then to hold her above just in case you decided to move on him? Right then guys. Well, what do you think to all that? <laughs> now, as I said in the beginning, there is a reason that we don't move our tarantulas outside of their enclosures and try pairing them, especially the females. Now, we tried something there, a little experiment really, because our female, she had already left her trap door, which is quite unusual in itself. And I wasn't 100% sure whether it was the fact that she perhaps heard the male tapping of an evening or whether she just outgrown her home and fancied something else or what that you know we will never really understand the, the true reasons behind why she left her trap door but we thought we'd give it a go and we put them on here now as you would have seen there she came out and she was nice and calm pretty good and then we got the male out and we moved him on and then all of a sudden you'll, you'll see that they're actually, once they start to move, they become very, very skittish. And to say we were chasing them around the log would be an understatement. So they were both very, very nervous. Now this is pretty understandable when you consider they're a trapdoor spider. So they, they're used to living entirely encased all the time and being very, very safe. They're now out in the open where predators can pick on them and eat them and do whatever. So they're, they're in danger of their lives, I should imagine. That's how they're feeling. So an interesting point there would be that we know our females in condition and we know our male is in condition. But the fact that their normal day-to-day -day routine and the sanctuary of that trapdoor has been removed, we saw there that mating was the last thing on their minds. All they really wanted to do, the pair of them, was just disappear in the opposite directions. They just want to run away and hide and just get out of the limelight, as it were. So, very interesting point there. And uh, this can happen with all your spiders. And it goes to show that when we brought back her old trapdoor and we put that down, you'd have seen in the video, I moved that down towards the male. Now, as soon as he realised that was in very close proximity to him, he got a whiff of the pheromones that would have been encased within that trap door. And you saw a change in his behavior immediately. He was no longer afraid of anything. He's now got breathing on his mind. And his, his whole persona completely changed. Now you'll see there that we managed to get him. He, he crawled onto the trap door and he was tapping and going away. He was really, really excited. It just goes to show the importance of the pheromones. He done the more, he lifted the door and climbed inside. And that's where he sat. And I was like, oh no, don't just sit there, you know, have a look around. But he seemed quite happy. So then we moved the whole thing over to the top of where she was sitting, where she was hunkered down in this bit of log, hoping that no one had noticed her. And then we literally just give her a very tiny little nudge just to get her to enter the, the beginning of the trap door in a hope that she would have seen him in there, he would have seen her and they would have kicked off. But it didn't, still didn't quite work like that. And they still took a bit of time. She was still afraid. She was still in that position where she was very, very nervous. And all she wanted to do was hide. And it wasn't until he started coming out that he managed to woo it her into a better frame of mind. And then you'll see there that as eventually he managed to just literally tickle her a few times and he, he got her attention and then we had that copulation. Now, I'm not 100% sure we had a successful insemination because these guys are so small, it's so difficult to actually see. But looking at the way he behaved, the way he came off the first time, 
then went back and had a second time. So I don't think he was successful the first time. He went back, he managed to get a better position, and then he seemed to be inseminating her for some time. And then you see he gently let her down and he gently walked away. And I would say that was a successful insemination. So fingers crossed, we've done it. Now, we've managed to get him back into his enclosure. And as you can see there, he's busy cleaning his pedi pouch. And uh, he seems to be quite content with himself at the moment. He only made a sperm web yesterday. So we're hoping he's definitely behaving like he's uh, he's done the job. So we're gonna give him a few days now, let him reload and get sorted out, and then we'll try him again. We've got another female to try him with. And what we've done now is we've also managed, if you see here, we also managed to coax our female back into her old track door. So she's inside here now. And uh, as soon as she went in there, she shut the lid behind her and we've not seen her since. She's tucked herself away there. And we put her in this new enclosure. So, she, so she's been rehoused at the same time. Now, all being well, she will either stay in there or she will move out and make a new track door. Now she's in her permanent home. We don't mind which she does. But at least she's back indoors. She's back in the track door. So we can give her another go. We'll, we'll try her again, maybe maybe in a week's time. We'll, we'll try these two again and see what happens. Right, well, a few lessons learned there. And I think we've uh, shown the importance of the pheromones when it comes to breeding our spiders. It's very, very important. This is why we move our males to our females because she lays a mat of webbing all outside her den in her burrow, everywhere. It is smothered in pheromones, and this is what excites the males and gets them going. And this is what eventually leads to a good, successful pairing. So it was a very important thing to do. And uh, I think we've we've all learned a thing or two there with that, with that little pairing. I think that was quite exciting. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, we will keep you updated, and we'll see how things progress. And hopefully we'll have another pairing video with the other females soon. So then don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. I'll see you soon, guys.